I'll tell you a little bit about our speaker for uh, this first keynote today. He's a technology leader with 18 years, or over 18 years, in delivering bespoke technology solutions by engaging agile and waterfall methodologies. He's got excellent ability in engaging clients, vendors, stakeholders across all levels to bring commercial and business growth to achieve organizational KPIs. My friends, let's extend a nice warm welcome to Sachin Tonk, Deputy Chief Data Officer, GovTech. Sachin, everybody. Morning. Yeah, can oh, yes. you hear me? Okay. Thank you for the warm welcome. <laughs> We're going to do the fist bump. Let's yeah. do the fist bump. One more time, everybody. Sachin. Yeah. Hi, guys. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, it's good to be back on physical events after spending two years in virtual events. And I, I hope the coffee has kicked in. And we will have a very cozy and open discussion as well. So. Um, I'll try to not bore you guys with some obvious things, but I'll try to trigger some thought processes in, uh, through my uh, presentation. I'll take you through the journey of my past experiences, some of the things which I've been working in digital innovation. Um, uh, as, a, as a very, very brief intro, um, uh, I have recently started my role with GovTech as a deputy chief data officer. Uh, uh, main idea is all about uh, data innovation, digital innovation, machine learning, AI kind of stuff. So, Looks very cool, but yeah, hopefully I'll be I'll be able to share some of the things. So, okay, long long term competitive advantages or you know why digital innovation. So, uh, I think uh, COVID nineteen has given us a lot of bad things, right? Bad memories. I don't want to start that, but yeah, a lot of bad memories. But one thing good about COVID is that everybody has even the small scale organization, big doesn't matter digital innovation and innovation mindset and the culture of the thought process and all those things has changed, right? The things which used to work uh, before COVID had suddenly stopped. And that COVID threw a, um, a litmus test on every one of us to understand that how does this whole pandemic, uh, are we ready for the pandemic or are we, are we just you know, doing things the traditional way? So basically, thanks to COVID, a lot of digital innovation, a lot of startups, a lot of new use cases have emerged. So basically, I would like to start with a vision all the way to reality, and hopefully, we'll leave you some good thoughts uh, after this presentation. Uh, sorry, let the topics which I will be covering is why digital innovation, key drivers, and joining forces. And I would like to break some of the myths as well, which is very common when we talk about digital innovation. And then we will talk about some industry deep dives, what, what has happened, key challenges, and I would also like to take how can we uh, get quick wins, how can we measure success. So let's start with why digital innovation. Deliberately, I have not put what digital innovation because I'm sure everybody knows about it and COVID has teached us a lot, but why? So basically, the, the fundamental things is traditional business done in a different way. So solving traditional problems in a different way. So there are a lot of things which has come up after COVID uh, how can we be more uh, customer focused? How can we actually reduce the physical interaction? How can we give, how can we replicate the same interaction when people used to have physical interaction in the virtual way? How can we actually achieve, uh, you know, excellence without, uh, with the need of going physically and, and risking ourselves or the, uh, our stakeholders, you know, spreading viruses and all. So this is the whole idea about digital innovation and transformation, and thanks to a lot of new technologies which has helped us. Uh, I just remember a few days back, right, we were, um, um, since I have a lot of experience in financial industry, most of the experience, right, we were talking about uh, smart bots, artificial intelligent bots, and all those things, right? So that has gone now, that's a st story of the past. Now we are talking about something um, uh, more personalized or hyper-personalized bots. Like for example, if I like a Hollywood star and I would like to just uh, go on a bot and ask some questions, how about that Hollywood star's face and the voice can come up through my preference, right? And I, can, I feel like that I'm interacting with my Hollywood star. So the same information can be passed in a much, much more uh, personalized way. So we call it hyper-personalization. So digital innovation is going in all these areas. So uh, let's look into the key drivers, right? So basically the key drivers are 
from, from my perspective, and I'm sure you, you might be agreeing with that, is divided into two aspects. One is outward focused, one is inward focused. Outward focus is when we are trying to engage our stakeholders, uh, like customers or from B2B, another business, this is outward. Like, so this is something which is focused. And internal is when we are actually trying to create operational efficiency for the organizations, right? So basically, um, the growth drivers and operational imp improvement are the two key pillars of the innovation. So basically, let's look at the operational improvement, which is the inward focus, which is like uh, uh, process efficiency. How can we be more efficient? How can we actually uh, reduce the bottlenecks? How can we actually automate the processes to improve the efficiency? Just to give you an example, um, in the banks, when you open an account, right, there are a lot of information which is which is which is shared, uh, which has been asked, right? And you will find in a lot of banks that you you are asked the same information in ten different ways, right? The same kind of information. How about that you get you are asked by by one time, and then the the same information, if it is required by different different processes in the bank, is replicated without you getting bothered. So it's it's all about uh, process uh, uh, process efficiency. Asset utilization. So, how do we uh, utilize our assets? Assets can, assets can be your physical assets, your your manpower. All is ab about asset utilization. Agility. We are talking about agility all the time. Two week sprint cycles, uh, speed to market. How can we more agile? Again, agility is very very uh, tightly coupled with pro uh, process efficiency as well. The more efficient we are in the processes, we will be more agile. New business service models, of course, after COVID, we have actually come up with a lot of new business lines, right? For example, uh, in, in the banks, there was new service lines open, right? You need um, microfinancing, a lot of things which for small-scale businesses. Now, let's look at the growth drivers, which is outward, demand generation. How can you dem generate the demand, right? Like, social media has come into picture where you just see one thing on the social media platform or on the website, they try to push that kind of similar products right, until, unless you buy it, right? So uh, this is a kind of new way of demand generation. You know, how do you reach and selection? How do you target your customers? How, how the customer purchase process has improved? How you are improving the customer experience? So this is the kind of key drivers which enables the thought process from the digital innovation perspective. So how do we join forces? Now we have to run an agenda of digital innovation. How do we, how do we bring different, different aspects so that we can actually drive the digital innovation in the organization or in, the, in, our, in, in, our, in our function, right? So basically, social media, cloud, big data analytics, something very big. Now we are capturing data like anything. So basically, right from the time of, from the sensor all the way, you know, your preferences, uh, websites tracking. Of course, data privacy is also one of the aspects where organization has to deep dive into, but Big data analytics has allowed us to actually crunch a lot of huge number of data and generate some meaningful insights, which can uh, create a uh, which can help us to create a strategy or a go-to market strategy for our customers. Internet of Things, very very important. Mobility and cybersecurity, all these aspects when come together in and and forms uh, synergies, then we achieve um, high level or a better improved digital innovation. Some of the some of the myths which which I want to discuss about, and you know, sometimes people I had few discussions also. Sometimes people say, "Hey, digital only applies with B two C because they see the real value of digital innovation." Okay, I have created a digital innovation uh, program, and I I have improved customer experience. Very clear, uh, very clear uh, kind of metrics to measure. But it is not only B2C, it is B2B also where digital innovation is equally important when business is doing businesses with other stakeholders. Digital transformation is just for online businesses. Again, a very, very common myth, especially, um, I would say, for the, uh, for the economies which are still developing, right? It's only for online. No, it is not for online. The physical products can also be given a same customer experience just like online. The, the third one, which is that the more digital we, uh, we become, the less our customers are willing to pay. The mindset is that, you know, uh, when we are actually uh, moving things on, 
on you know e-commerce or or uh, from a digital innovation perspective customer will not pay because they will not be able to see the physical uh, products but but the whole idea is the customer experience the enhanced customer experience will allow us to charge more and to charge for our service so this is something which is which is i would say a common with which which is there uh, the fourth one i think which is which is very very close to me in a, in a, in a, in a myth is that the customer demographic is more uh, established in only uh, and it's only for generation x not for the old generation i think our old generation is also becoming very smart we, they have smart devices they have started uh, uh, understanding the importance of internet the communication the connectivity so i think the myth that okay it's only for generation x is is no more relevant and digital is relevant in only in developed markets if you look and if you look at the research which is coming up uh, in the markets like vietnam indonesia you will be surprised that their um, digital innovation paradigm and the focus is much much more than the developed countries so these are the few myths which i wanted to leave it with you uh, happy to discuss after this presentation as well some of the industries uh, just wanted to bring some examples that how the digital uh, digital innovation looks like in individual industries since i come uh, mainly from financial services i'll start with financial services uh, the journey of financial services starting from account opening all the way to get the credit card and um, um, there are so many processes so many activities which has completely gone from physical to complete online even um, even um, your stolen credit card even your your new credit card issuance or opening of account or even going for a trading account demat account there are so many activities where you can actually uh, use digital innovation kyc kind of applications where you take this picture of yourself from your mobile and upload it and you don't need any physical interaction with the bank so it's 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 kind of pretty cool uh, uh, innovation which has which has happened and financial in, uh, services are still moving ahead how can and and one thing which has also achieved with this whole innovation they have actually reduced a quite a significant number of cost in terms of um, manpower assets right they have actually used the manpower into more strategic roles rather than uh, your your physical role so then life sciences is second which is very important and we have seen the importance of um, innovation especially in the big data analytics space data where covid-19 uh, uh, medicines you know uh, the the vaccines which has come it's all credit to big data analytics and how we are able to generate the data and and based on this information how the companies have generated so a lot of innovations has happened in that area energy and chemical and telco and media companies partnership uh, has enabled these uh, innovation paradigm as well to shift uh we have talked a lot about digital innovation how cool it is but at the same time when everything which is which is good comes with some kind of challenges and risk i'll deep dive into a uh, uh, later slides that what sh how should we uh, the management from the top should should address and what are the key questions but some of the challenges and risk which i want to leave it with you is 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 from a perspective uh, digital uh, agenda should be sp uh, is like a uh, is spreading across the organization starting from the management going from growth growth and operations risk and compliance and core functions and how do we strike a balance when we talk about uh, risk and compliance for example for innovation we need lot of data sharing now we can't just let data shared across platforms without having a compliance and the legal and the data privacy sorted out right so that's a challenge how do we strike a balance now for example uh, if you want to launch a product or you want to uh, uh, launch an artificial intelligence uh, related initiatives how do you make sure your ethical ai is in place right how do you test that application how do you make sure that your application will not be biased when it 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 goes into production then synthetic data comes into picture where we generate uh, millions and billions of data set so that we can actually test the application and we can also publish that synthetic data to the audience that hey this is what level of applic uh, application testing we have done so 
Long story short, striking balance in all these four pillars is very important to uh, drive the real agenda of, of digital innovation. Now, what should be the critical questions answered by the management? And what I have done here is I have actually categorized based on the role. For example, um, of course, the change in the organization, in my personal opinion, should come from top to top to bottom because leaders should lead us so that we, keep, we, we will be able to follow their footsteps. So what are the questions the CEO should ask? These are the three questions, which is what should I do about digital uh, disruption in my industry? Like about competition, what my industry players are doing, how can I be uh, going ahead? And digital innovation agenda gives you a competitive advantage over your customers. How does digital help me to grow the business? This is a very obvious and very clear metrics to measure. How, how does digital innovation helping me? Why should I be paying money for that? How, how does it threaten the value chain ecosystem, right? So basically, uh, for example, before, uh, before COVID, the supply chains were not, not disrupted, right? So basically, after COVID, there was a lot of disruption in supply chain, right? So how it how this, disrupt, disrupt, uh, this disruption. So basically, from the COE, uh, COE perspective, the idea is how to get maximum return on investment on the digital innovation agenda, what we are trying to achieve. Now comes at the operating level, which is the chief operating officer. Again, I talked about operational efficiency. All the things about CEO is how I am improving my processes, how I am achieving, how I am helping the organization to achieve operational efficiency. And operational efficiency can only be achieved when we actually get out of the repetitive mode and manual processes are fully automated to save the time and the energy, at the same time how agile we are. From a CIO perspective, the key challenges or the key things to ask is what kind of technology infrastructure I should be, which is, should be scalable, which should be sustainable, right? Technology changes very fast. Every six months, eight months, what used to be cool is no more cool anymore. So basically, our infrastructure should be scalable, adaptable, so that we can actually move ahead quite fast. Uh, Chief Data Officer, again, uh, my area kind of thing. From, from my perspective or from usually the, the discussion I had with CDO is, again, uh, how the digital will help me to achieve excellence, right? So basically, for example, if I want to give a stakeholder an opportunity to leverage the power of data, how will I be able to support that? For example, my retail business or my, 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 my senior stakeholders want to do their self-service analytics, right? They want to generate their own meaningful insights. How can I actually create a platform through digital innovation that I can be able to provide that information? right, without having a dependency on IT and the infrastructure team. From a chief marketing officer, again, the metric will be my customer reach, customer focus, customer centric. And from the CHRO perspective, how the organizational changes are happening, right? What are the design? What is the talent? How we are acquiring a new talent? How we are able to sustain our talent? How we are making sure our talent is not moving ahead? So new competitors are, em uh, are emerging from previous unrelated industries as well. So now, uh, left with only two minutes, so I would like to share what is quick wins look like, right? Um, the things which has worked in my past experiences, digital agenda or digital innovation cannot happen in one day, right? And you have to, buy, you have to take in a lot of stakeholders buy-in. So basically, how do you do a quick win? You actually use POC and prototyping in order to get their buy-in. So always, whenever I want to bring some um, innovation idea on the table, I usually try to give them a prototype to play with or to walk through a prototype so that they are able to appreciate what I'm talking rather than just, uh, just talking in the air. So this is, this is the way we get the quick wins. You start with small, then you, 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 do, you do big. This is one of my favorite slides, and I always try to put a, some or the other way in the presentation which I make. I always leave this a thought that always think of a paper plane first, but your aim should be your Boeing 747 or A380, whatever you, 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 you like. So, but you start with a paper plane. You, you take baby steps before you, you become a Usain Bolt, right? So, so let's, let's take small and think about big. So to scale across, we have to think about three things, what we are trying to achieve, what will be our methodology to achieve, 
and how will we aim for excellence? I have used aim for excellence is because I'm, I'm just not trying to uh, say, okay, we will achieve something, but we are trying to delight customers, whether it is your internal stakeholders, your external ex stakeholders, but we are trying to aim for excellence. Measuring success is also very important at every step. Uh, highly recommend that you, you go back and you measure success. Uh, even if you, are, if you are getting some bad feedback, you're, you, are, you, are being, you have some of the people who are very critical of your ideas and all those things, right? Happy to take that feedback, but I think those are the best friend who, who criticizes you because they are the people who makes you better. So basically measuring success, whether it is negative or positive, both is very important. And continuous improvement is the feedback loop, which always we do that. So this was my last slide, and I have 20 seconds, and I think the, the organizer will be very, very happy to see my discipline on the slides as well. Thank you. It was nice um, uh, sharing some of the thought process. We'll connect after the presentation as well. Thank you. There we go.